Hello and what's up to you all, Accounting Buffins. This is your chance now. This is Len Extra Live with me, AB, and Mr. Ashraf. How are you, sir? Good, AB, and how have you been doing? I'm feeling good. I've been great, and I'm still good. Perfect. Yeah. And how are our grade 12 Accounting Buffins doing? They really missed you, I must say. Did like, they? That's an honest truth. Okay, brilliant. Did that's you miss great. them? Of course. <laughs> all right, welcome back. And I had, I had this one special mindset by the name of uh, Jake Himnis. I think he's watching even right now. He said, please, whenever you see this man, just say, he has helped me a lot. I've passed my metric. Thanks to him. It's only a pleasure, guys. And if you stay with mindset, we're going to make sure you get an A in accounting, AB. As you know that when Mr. Ashraf is around, you don't have to fear. What are we doing today? AB, today we're looking at companies and we're looking at the preparation of the final accounts and how we're going to go about doing the necessary entries because I know out there some of you have worries and fears and challenges. We're going to make sure that at the end of the show, you are A for away as far as the company preparation of the final accounts are concerned. So true. We're here for you, Mindsetters. All you need to do is to hit us up on facebook.com forward slash Lenextra, like the page and share it with all your friends. Ask your questions in there and help one another. Otherwise, you can follow us on Twitter at Lenextra and lastly, download your notes all for free at len.mindset.co.za. Now, we have an awesome campaign that we're doing, Mr. Ashraf. Yes, tell me about it. You, you, you know that it is yes. the month of love, right? Yes, yes, yeah, tomorrow yes. it's Valentine's okay, Day. Okay. I'm not going to ask what you have planned. Tell don't ask. But we have <laughs> something that we have planned for the mindset. Good. Brilliant. We're having a campaign which says, show your love. Show your love. All you need to do is to post a picture of you and something or someone that means some, so much to you. Something that is so special to you or something that you love doing. Good. Like, I love cars. So I've taken a picture of myself with a car and posted it on the page. Or, and after that, I commented and said, I love cars. So that's what we're looking for as mindsetters. If you love your family, post a picture of you with your family and share with us and let us know what you love and what means a lot to you. Let me ask you, Mr. Ashraf, what means so much to you? Family is of utmost importance, A.V. And yes, we love them dearly. Right. So if you like Mr. Ashraf, you need to post a picture of you and your family. And all we're going to do is to show the love. Hashtag show the love. But for now, show the love by learning more. Absolutely. Let's show the love for accounting. Exactly. Okay. I believe we have a challenge question. Good, good, let's good. Challenge let's them. challenge it. Okay, guys. So what are we looking at? We are looking at the preparation of your final accounts. Now remember, this can only take place once you understand all the accounts that are done prior to preparation of the final account. So therefore, we're going to start with, like we said, preparation of the final accounts. And we're starting with our challenge question. And in our challenge question, we are saying that the following balances appeared inter alia, just means amongst others, in the books of Hida Limited on the 1st of January 2013. So you were given the ordinary share capital. You were told it's 100,000 shares, and the value of the shares was 400,000. You were also told that your retained income at the beginning of the year amounted to a figure of 250,000. Now, mindsetters, listen to me and listen carefully, please, guys. When you engage with past papers, especially when it comes to companies, you're going to pick up something that says shares of a par value. Now remember, that is now a thing of the past. In other words, we only look at shares of no par value because that is in line with the Companies Act and in line with the CAPS curriculum, the one that you will be examined on. So with your past papers, remember, you have to make certain changes. Right? So as we go along, I'll allude to those items to make you aware that those are items that you need to ignore or change the question. And I'm sure your educators out there would do the necessary for you as well. Coming back to our, sh our challenge question, what are we told? Our shares were issued as follows. What had happened? On the 1st of January, we sold further shares, 100,000 at 5 Rand. Then... On the 30th of March, we sold another 50,000 shares and we sold them at 6 Rand. Notice, this is what we refer to as the issue price. The price at which these shares were issued. For example, these on the 5th of September were issued at 7 Rand. So you can clearly see that they were issued at different prices. Okay, now 
On the 25th of October, the company has bought back 20,000 shares from a disgruntled shareholder. There are reasons for buyback. Obviously, we're not going to go into the detail. I expect you to go through information looking at the reasons for buyback and also when will a company be allowed to buy back. There are certain conditions that need to be fulfilled before we can buy back of shares. Please do that reading by yourselves. And you are then asked to do certain ledger accounts. Okay, that's the challenge question. We now move on to the lesson for today. Now, obviously, there are certain new accounts that you're going to be faced with when you are working with companies. And what are these? One, income tax. Have you seen, have you noticed that when you did a sole trader or when you worked with a partnership, the income tax was paid by the owner. But because the company is a legal person, the company has therefore, it's important that what does the company do? The company, because it's a legal person in its own right, therefore the company will have to pay taxes on the profits and the dividends. Now remember something else. When we're talking about income tax, yes, income tax is an expense. However, it is a special expense dealing with the company. And therefore, you will find that it will not be regarded as an overhead expense. Rather, it will be dealt with as an appropriation. And that's what you need to make a mental note of. Okay? Remember something else? The, the, the income tax is changed on a continuous basis when the Honorable Minister, the Minister of Finance, Minister Praveen Gordhan, announces the budget. Listen to it. Look out for the budget. Why? Because you will find, is there a change in the rate of taxation? And obviously, I'm sure you can do more reading with regards to income tax. Ordinary shared dividends. Remember that the reason you invest money in a company is because you want a return. Am I right, A.B.? You are definitely exactly. right. Exactly. So why do you buy the shares? As Mr. Joe Citizen, why do you buy the shares? Because you want a return on your investment in a company. And what is that return called? That return is called ordinary shared dividends. Remember, this dividend is an expense to the company. Why? Because they're going to be paying this out to the shareholders. So, again, we find that, we, let's go back, and this is important, all profits made by a company belong to whom? They belong to the company. And therefore, the company directors will decide on what portion of the income would be declared as dividends. Therefore, we find that ordinary share dividends is a nominal account, yes, and it is closed off to the appropriation account. Again, you can see that this is a special expense, an expense that deals directly with the company. So already you've seen income tax and ordinary share dividends are unique to a company and they are special. Keep that in mind. Okay, now, director's fees. When we deal with director's fees, these are fees that are paid to both executive and non-executive directors. Okay, now remember, the amount that is paid to your directors is regarded as an expense. So, like a salary and wages expense, it is an expense that must be disclosed, important, and it's an expense that deals directly with the directors. Got that? Brilliant. So obviously, this is now an expense that you now need to close off. So where are you going to close it off to? This expense will be closed off to your profit and loss account. Okay. And this therefore means that when dealing with director's fees, 
it will obviously, the amount that they are going to receive will be specified in your memorandum of incorporation. Clear? So in other words, mindsetters, what are we saying? We are saying that this expense, director's fees, will be treated like, a, like an ordinary nominal account. And it will then be closed off to my profit and loss account. Now I'm sure there's another expense that you could be thinking of. And yes, that is right. We are talking about this expense that is called audit fees. And what do we know about audit fees? We know that this audit fee is an expense to the company, right? Just remember, obviously we'll be dealing about with this in more detail in later lessons. But remember, when we are talking audit fees, we are talking internal auditor appointed by directors and they report to the directors of the firm. Got that? Whereas your external or your independent auditor is appointed by the shareholders at the AGM annual general meeting to do what? To express an opinion on the financial statements of a company. We'll talk about this in more detail in lessons to follow. So watch this space closely. So the fee that is then paid to the auditors would therefore be an expense called audit fees. Again, a nominal account closed off to my profit and loss account. So you have seen clearly now that two expenses, director's fees, audit fees, were treated like normal expenses. And remember, these are subjected to your adjustments. Like what? Like accrued expenses or prepaid expenses. So understand that when dealing with these accounts, they would be subjected to our adjustments. The other two that we dealt with were the ordinary shared dividends and the income tax. We said these were special and therefore they would be dealt with in a different way, not being closed off as normal expenses to the profit and loss account. Rather, they would be seen as going to the other final account, namely your appropriation account. Okay, so now, if we look at, there's my audit fee that we spoke about, and one account that you are definitely going to be dealing with is what we refer to as the retained income. What did we say? We said the profits made by a company belong to the company. This therefore means that your shareholders are not automatically entitled to dividends. The directors are entitled to retain part of the net profit. Why do we retain the net profit? A very important question. Why do we retain profits? Companies retain profits. Why? So that one, the shareholders' equity will increase. And the main reason they retain profits is to, for future expansion or growth, and also for equalization of dividends. Please keep that at the back of your minds. Okay. Now, obviously, if you look at this part here where it says, at the end of the, when you're doing your income statement, of which we will deal with in more detail when we do the financial statements, but the only reason we are putting it here is to show you that you have your net profit before tax. That's what you are used to up to this stage here, because that's what, you, what you've learned in grade 11. Then you bring in your taxation, and notice you subtract your taxation, and this then gives you your net profit after tax. Now, the net profit after tax is credited to the retained income account, which will then be reflected in our note when we are doing our retained income. Now, remember this here. When we're doing the notes to the financial statement, you will see a direct relationship between the retained income account and the note for retained income in your financial statement. So, here's our question. Let's look at our question. We have a business, a company called Happy Badges. We, have, we are authorized to issue a million shares. We are told that there's a scenario that we have here 
where the directors were concerned about the market prices. And you can read all that information for yourself. What are we required to do? We are required to do certain ledger accounts. Now, obviously, that is the crux of the lesson. So, the place to be is Mindset Learned. Take a break, and we'll see you in a jiffy. Thank you so much, Mr. Ashraf. On the page, it's buzzing. Mindset is make sure that you also answer the challenge question because already it is posted. Remember, it is facebook.com forward slash Extra. We'll see you after the break. Welcome back, Mindsetters. If you just joined us now, you're a bit late, but you can still catch up because the A-team is in the building, Mr. Ashraf and Ibi, of course. Yes, that's fine. <laughs> A-team, eh? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we make the triple A-team because yeah. there's another Abram upstairs. Of course. But otherwise, the Mindsetters seem to be having a, question, a, a problem with the challenge question on no problem. what they need to do. Don't fear when Ashraf is near. Don't. Okay, Ibi, let's tell them what to do. Guys, with regards to the challenge question, you were given information and you were asked to show the entries in the ledger accounts. In other words, you had to show the ordinary share capital account and you had to show the retained income account. So based on the information that you have, you must show how this information will impact on those two ledger accounts. Clear, A for OA. Crystal. Right, let's go to our question that we were busy with. Okay, in this question here, we had to complete a number of accounts based on the following information. And the best way to go about doing this here is to start off by indicating your balances in the accounts that are required. Let's do that. Where's my ordinary share capital? You will notice that my ordinary share capital has a balance of 500,000 Rand. So watch. Again, guys, remember... Ordinary share capital is an equity account and therefore it has a credit balance and there's my balance. Now notice, A.V. Ashraf has abbreviated. Why? Because Ashraf has a license to do that. Mm -hmm. Mindset is you do not have the license to abbreviate. So when you are working in your activities or for the exams, please ensure that you do not abbreviate. You write in full. Right? Please, guys. Remember that. Okay. So, the next thing that we have is our retained income with 98,000 Rand. Therefore, in my retained income account, notice my balance. Again, on the credit side, why? Because retained income is an equity account. This means that from the previous financial year, we had retained an amount of 98,000 Rand. So my equity accounts are two. The, what makes up shareholders' equity is your ordinary share capital plus your retained income. Okay, back to my information. SARS income tax. Be very careful when dealing with this account here because this account could feature in two places. What am I referring to? Watch. And yes, A.V., I'm sure you remember my acronym, A.V. Mm -hmm. You do? Yes. R-T-F-Q. Read the full question. Yes. We won't swear now. Won't, okay, A.V., so we won't use yes. uh, an expletive. <laughs> we'll just stick to read the full, full question. question. Okay. <laughs> right. So now, what does it tell you? It tells you that SARS income tax is a debit balance of 15,000 Rand. Watch this, mindsetters. When it comes to your SARS income tax, in this case here, watch, my balance is on the debit side of 15,000 Rand. What does this mean? It means that SARS owes us money. And that's the important part. So you can see, at this stage here, your SARS income tax is an asset account. They are owing us money, therefore a debit balance. Okay? Is it possible for the SARS income tax to have a credit balance? Certainly it is. If 
we had underpaid SARS from the previous year, then that account would, indic would be indicated by means of a credit balance. So keep this in mind. What do you keep in mind? That when we are dealing with SARS income tax, always make sure that you know whether it is a debit or a credit balance. Like I alluded to early on, it could either be a debit or a credit balance, depending on what had transpired in the previous financial period. Okay, shareholders for dividends can only have a credit balance because it is a liability, period, nothing else. So let's go to our shareholders for dividends and let's put in the balance on the credit side because it's a liability and what was the amount that was due to them? Let's check it out. 85,000 Rand. Therefore, in this account here, my balance is 85,000 Rand. Okay, so once I've set in and put in all my balances that were given to me, I now go to my transactions. One, the amount due to shareholders for the dividends were paid. So, guys, you've done some work on this last week with one of my uh, co-presenters. Now, all that I'm doing for you now is I'm just showing you, I want to get into something that's really important for this lesson here. So, we're gonna pay the amount that was due to the shareholders. Obviously, how much are you gonna pay? You're gonna pay the amount of 85,000 Rand, and therefore, your detail here will be bank. Okay, you've paid them the amount that was due. Look at the other part of the question. What does it tell you? It tells you we also received a refund check from SARS for the amount due to us. Something different, isn't it? Because generally you think you're only owing SARS. In this case here, they are owing you. Therefore, notice in that in your SARS income tax account, you now have a contra entry. And what's my double entry? I'm receiving fulus, money, okay? Mula, debit, my bank account. Why? Asset increasing in value, credit SARS income tax. There's my entry. Can you see I'm receiving the money from them, an amount of 15,000 Rand. Okay, so that's done and dusted. Let's carry on with the question. Income tax details are as follows. The company paid the first provisional tax amount of 280,000 Rand. Where do we go to? Two accounts involved, SARS income tax and bank. We issued a check, bank is being credited. I'm going to debit my SARS income tax account, bank, and the amount is 280,000 Rand. Okay, next one. What happened now? A second provisional tax payment was made for 290,000. Okay, so let's go to that one now. In my SARS income tax account, once again, a debit to SARS income tax, 290,000. Let's just check if that amount was correct. The amount, the second provisional payment of 290,000. That's right, 290,000. In my SARS income tax account, 290,000 Rand. Detail will be bank. Okay, so these are provisional payments that are made to SARS. Identified by means of asking yourself, a check was issued, credit bank, start with a known. What are we debiting? We are debiting the SARS income tax account. Why? Because these are at payments that we have made in advance. Okay. On with the question. So, we've dealt with that one, that one. The income tax for the year amounted to 600,000 Rand. When you receive your tax assessment at the end of the year, what is important to note is the entry that you're gonna make regarding that particular transaction. Let's see what it is. So, Income tax, we said, is an expense to us. Debit income tax. So immediately, I go into my nominal account. Which nominal account? Income tax. Debit it with 600,000. Watch. Debit income tax, 600,000. Detail, SARS. 
which is an accepted abbreviation, income tax. Okay, so it's a debit to my income tax reason because it's a nominal account, decreasing, it's an expense, decreasing equity, therefore debited. Who do I owe it to? I owe it to my SARS income tax. Watch here, there's my income tax entry. And the amount is 600,000 Rand. Now remember, what happens to the SARS income tax account? It is a balance sheet account. So grade 12s, all that you need to do is to balance this account. Add up debits and credits. And then obviously, once you've done that, you can exactly see whether it ends up with a debit or a credit balance. We're not going to go into this account because I'm sure you can balance that account. However, what is important to note is this one here, the nominal account. What happens to income tax? Remember we said it's an expense. If you remember, early on I said it's a special expense. Meaning what? It's an expense that's unique to a company. Therefore, you can't take it to profit and loss. Come on, what's the answer? I can hear them shouting out the answer, Avi. <laughs> that's right. The answer is, guys, appropriation, which is a special account dealing specifically with the company. My entry, therefore, is a debit to my appropriation account. Watch this here. Income tax. And the amount is 600,000 Rand. A debit to my appropriation account. And yes, you're right. A credit to income tax, 600,000. Where have I taken it to? My appropriation account. Now let's clearly identify the two transactions here. One, where we debited income tax, this one here, and credited SARS income tax, that was my adjustment. Remember that? Okay, two, where I closed off income tax to my appropriation account, that's what I call a closing transfer. Now watch how, how rational accounting is. How easy it is to understand. What am I doing to income tax? I'm closing off the income tax account. And what am I doing? I'm transferring it to where? To my final account, namely my appropriation account. There it is. So the second entry is a closing transfer. Got that? Brilliant. Let's carry on. Okay, so we've de dealt with all of that. Okay, then we are told that th this was 30 being 30% 30 of the net profit. Okay, we'll do that calculation just now. Let's carry on with shares and dividends. What are we told? We issued 40,000 no power value ordinary shares for 240,000 Rand. We sold more shares. Okay, that we know goes to my ordinary share capital account and its bank because we are receiving money and the amount for that is 240,000 Rand. So here goes, let's do the entry for that one, 240,000 Rand. Double entry, debit, bank, credit, ordinary share capital. The equity is increasing. Right, next one. Issued another 50,000 shares at 8 Rand per share. Obviously, 50,000 times 8 will give you an amount of 400,000 Rand. So therefore, you sold more shares. Let's do that one there. Bank. And the amount is 400,000 Rand. Got it? Okay. So that one is done. And that one is done. The directors decided to pay an interim dividend of 140,000 Rand. Guys, a dividend was paid. So the, the moment a dividend is paid, it means that a check has been issued. Okay? Immediately it tells you. What does it tell you? It tells you that you now have an account called ordinary share dividends. Watch. My contra entry is bank because it has been paid and the amount that we paid was 140,000 Rand. Okay, let's enter that. 
140,000 rand. Okay, so what do you understand from this year? That the moment a dividend is paid, immediately you credit bank and you debit your nominal account, which is your expense account. Okay, now what are we told? After investigation, the directors realized that the shares were undervalued in the market and they therefore decided to buy 45,000 shares for 333,000 rand. Aha! The buyback of shares. How do we go about dealing with this particular one? Watch this carefully. Step number one. The moment you have a buyback of shares, the first thing that you have to do, grade 12s, is to calculate the average price of your shares. And how do we do that? Very simple. We do that as follows. Watch. Look at your shares. The value of your shares was 500,000, 240,000, and 400,000. So what do you do? You add back the value of your shares. Let's do that. So we had 500,000. One more zero, I think. That's right. Plus, what's the next amount that we had? 240 and 400. Okay, so let's do that. 240. 240,000 plus the next amount that we have there is 400,000 plus 400, 1, 2, 3, and that equals to 1,140,000. Okay, so 1,140,000 is what? The value of the shares. How many shares does that represent? Let's look at it. It's represented by... 100,000 plus 40,000, that's 140,000, plus a further 50,000, that's 190,000. So what do we do? Watch this here. We divide this by 190,000. What am I doing? I'm taking the value of my shares, right? Dividing it by the number of shares, and let's do that. Divided by 190,000, and this gives me a value of 6 rand per share. And this is what we refer to as the average price of the share. How are we doing for time, A.V.? We're doing well. I think it's time to take an ad break. Is it time already? When you're ready. Gee, was, is it time already? Yes. Oh, do we, do we take an ad break now? Because I it was into the question. I lost track of time. All right. Let's finish the question after the break. Okay. So we'll carry on after the break. Then. Yes. Thanks, Maybe. Thank you. My sisters, keep your questions coming. Remember, it's facebook.com forward slash learn extra. We'll see you after this. Welcome back, Accounting Buffins. I see on the page there's a lot of you are enjoying the show, such as Malunga Ana and Jawule saying, I'm tuned in and I like the show. It's a revision for me now because we have covered this work at school, but I'm still going to learn with you guys. That's Jawulam Shongo. Thank you, Mind Center. Thanks, Jawula. We love that. Yes, and let's keep learning. Thank you, AB. Let's go for it. Guys, remember, we were busy with this particular aspect, the buyback of the share. Right. Okay, now, we bought back 45,000 shares. And they were bought back for 333,000. So what are we going to do? We're going to take the 333,000 and divide it by 45,000. Oops, what did we do there? Let's delete that. Divide by uh, 45,000 because that's what we bought back. Is it right? That's correct. 45,000. And your answer is 7 rand and 40 cents. Now, this is important. This was the purchase price, the buyback price of one share. Now, if you recall, if you recall, what did we say? The average price was 6 rand, 
we are buying back at seven rand and 40 cents. Clearly you can see that you have paid one rand and 40 cents above the average price. Okay, now how do we deal with this entry? Two parts to the entry. Let's deal with the six rand first. What do we do? We take 45,000, 45,000, and we multiply that by six, which is the average price, which is 270,000 rand. Double entry, watch the space very carefully. What are we gonna do? We're going to say, debit my ordinary share capital with 270,000 rand. Remember that this is the shares that we are buying back. In other words, we are paying for it. So you credit bank and you debit ordinary share capital, but the secret, you know, I love my secrets, eh? <laughs> the secret here, guys, that is the average price. Watch that. It's the average price. You can see the link. What did we do? We took 45,000 was the number of shares at the average price of 6 Rand to give me the 270,000 Rand. Got that? Okay, that's one part of the transaction. Now, obviously, we have to, we, we actually paying back. What did we pay back? We paid back or we bought back shares to the value of 333,000. Can you see that? So therefore, we say 333,000 minus 270,000. And that gives you a figure of 63,000. Thousand rand. Now watch. That's one way of calculating the price above the average price. There's another way of calculating it, isn't it? Sure, there is. Watch the space. We're saying thirty-three thousand. Sorry, forty-five thousand times one rand and forty cents, and voila! What do we get? Sixty-three thousand rand. Now let's look at the entry. What's the double entry? My double entry is as follows. I cannot take it to ordinary share capital because I've already taken the average price from that account. So therefore, that amount of 63,000 will go to your retained income account. There it is. And the entry is bank. Remember, you have paid out a total of how much? We've paid out a total of 270,000 plus the 63,000, if you recall, was 333,000 rand. So you, have, you are crediting bank with 333,000. You are debiting ordinary share capital with the 270,000, which is the average price. And you are debiting your retained income with the difference above the average price of 63,000 rand. Now, Another important one, watch this here. Your shareholders for dividends, obviously, when you come to your final dividend, you're gonna calculate your final dividend. You're gonna multiply the, the number of shares that you have left over by your final dividend. We're not gonna go into this because you know how to deal with this here. The point that I want to emphasize to you is the following. Your ordinary share dividends after you have declared, when you declare a final dividend, you debit ordinary share dividends and you credit shareholders for dividends. So whatever amount you get here, remember, you're going to see the solution to this particular activity. So we're not going to look at what, how we're going to calculate that amount. All that you have to remember is, is that your, the amount of shares that you have left over times the final dividend which was declared. So whatever that amount is, the point that I want to illustrate to you is that this ordinary share dividends total is also closed off to my appropriation, which is my final account. And therefore, and therefore, if you look at your appropriation account, the next item that you will have is ordinary share dividends. Right, so whatever that amount is, whatever amount you calculate here, as your ordinary share dividends, whatever that answer is, that amount that you have calculated as the total will be transferred to your appropriation account and there you bring in the total of your ordinary share dividends from your ordinary share dividends account. Okay, now what do we do? Now you look at 
the profit and loss figure. Once you have determined your profit and loss figure, whatever figure that may be, right? This figure here, now watch this very closely. This is one method of dealing with the retained income and the appropriation. The choice is entirely yours. I find this method the easiest, and watch what we do. So let's use examples so we can illustrate this here. Let us assume that the total on the profit and loss was, uh, um, in this particular example, if we said that, let's look at the question, what did they tell us about the income tax? It was 30% of the net profit. So in other words, if we do this here, let's do this calculation here, right? We said 600,000 is equal to 30%, right? Your 100% will be equal to your unknown, which is X. Now, obviously, this sounds like a maths lesson, A.B., but it's an accounting lesson. So what do we do now? We solve, and we say 600,000, 600,000, right? 600,000 times 100 divided by 30 will be equal to 2 million rand. So in other words, what are we saying? We are saying that our profit figure here was 2 million rand. Okay. And if my total... Now, I'm just using an example now so to show you that if the total ordinary share dividends was 400,000, okay, so 2 million minus a million clearly indicates to you that you had left over, you have retained a million rand worth of profit. Watch this, watch this closely now. Watch my double entry. A debit to appropriation retained income of one million rand and you will go into your retained income account and in your retained income account you will say appropriation this year one million rand. Obviously, guys, this is just an example. Why? Because we did not calculate our actual dividend figure. We just used the figure here to make it easy for us to understand how we deal with the appropriation. So remember, it could happen, yes, when you find that the debit side is greater than your credit side, then obviously your contra entry will change. And what will that contra entry be? It will then be a credit to my appropriation and a debit to my retained income, showing you that you did not have sufficient retained income and you had to use the income from the previous year. Okay, Avi, question and challenges. What do we do? Right. Challenges let's or questions? Where are we going to? Should we go? Let's go straight to the challenge question, then we'll take okay, the questions Okay, that's after. fine. Let's go straight to the challenge question. In my challenge question, you can see that simply what had happened here, we had 100,000 we had, we had 100, shares valued at 400,000 rand. Then what happened? We issued 100,000 shares at 5 rand, another 50,000 shares at 6 rand, and then uh, we sold another 40,000 shares at 7 rand. So what did we need to do? And this is important. Watch this here. Look at your ordinary share capital. Clearly illustrating to you the following. One, there's your balance. Okay. There's your balance at the beginning of the year. You've issued shares there, there, and there. Those were your issue of shares. Okay. So this means that in order to calculate your average, what did you have to do? You had to calculate the value of your shares, right? Divided by the number of issued shares, and then compare that with your selling price. In other words, in other words, once you've calculated your average, you found that these shares were bought back at 768 cents. Now, what is clearly evident to you from the two accounts, you can see there was the average price of the shares, right? And the difference between 
the, se- the buyback price and the average price is the amount that goes into your retained income. So clearly you can see this, uh, grade 12s. The, the emphasis here is when you are working with a buyback of share, step number one, always calculate the average price. How do we do that? We take the total value of my shares, starting with your balance, plus any further issues of shares that you may have, and you take that value and you divide it by the number of shares that have been issued. That will then give you your average price. Then, you take the average price and you compare it with the buyback price. Okay, so once you've done that, then clearly you can see the portion above the average price will be entered, like we said earlier in the lesson, into the retained income. So this portion is the price above the average price, and the average price will feature in my ordinary share capital. So I'm sure you met the challenge. I'm sure you understand exactly now how to do the buyback of shares. Okay, Evie, I hope question so. time. Question time. Wane Lesson Pure says, Good afternoon, my sisters, Abram and Ashraf. Could you please tell me the double entry for interim or final dividends declared not paid? Right. Fine, guys. If it's an interim dividend, you find that an interim dividend is paid. Double entry, our, our uh, lesson will clearly indicate to us what we have to do. Watch this very, watch this very closely. An interim dividend that you have paid the contra entry is a debit to ordinary share dividends, right? The detail being bank, okay? And a final dividend that is declared. What's my double entry? Very, very, very important question. Why? Because it changes. Notice no payment took place. Therefore, you debit your ordinary share dividends, but you credit shareholders for dividends. In other words, you raise a liability. Why? Because you are owing that to your shareholders. And notice, in your ordinary, sh- in your shareholders for dividends account, this is where the entry will come in, ordinary share dividends, and that will be my contra entry. Once again, when you pay a dividend, you credit bank and debit ordinary share dividends. But when you declare, you still debit ordinary share dividends, but you credit your liability shareholders for dividends. Fire your way out, Evie. Next one. Awesome. Bruce Gomane, when do we credit SARS income tax then? S- very simple, guys. You will credit SARS income tax at the end of your financial year when you receive your assessment from SARS. Watch my double entry. Once again, our question here clearly explains that. Watch. Look at the double entry. De- our income tax was, was 600,000 rand. So once again, a debit to SARS income, uh, uh, sorry, let me repeat that. A debit to income tax, which is my nominal account. It's my expense. I only do this entry at the end of the year when I receive my assessment. A debit to income tax, expense account. What do I credit? I credit my SARS income tax. There's the credit entry in SARS income tax, indicating that that's the amount that I actually owe them in terms of my assessment. Okay, next one. Last one. one. Last, last, last. Last, last, last one. Yes. um, Vanessa Shongwane, please explain the SARS and the SARS income tax account. Okay. Same story, guys. Your SARS income tax, remember, is a balance sheet account, right? You start off with a balance, either a debit, as was our example, but yes, your SARS income tax could have a credit balance. In that instance, if your SARS income tax has a credit balance, let's just show you a T account here. If your SARS income tax has a credit balance at the beginning of the year of 10,000 Rand, what's going to happen? It means that we are now going to pay them for the amount that we are owing them and the entry will therefore be a bank entry on the debit side indicating that we are paying our liability. So the secret is to look at the balance in the SARS income tax account. Well, guys, I think we've reached the end, but like Ashraf always says, aim for the moon, Mm Avi, because if you don't get there, definitely you're going to be a shining star, an accounting shining star. Until next time, Avi. 
So you? true. And as they say that the greatest asset in life, it is your faith. And the greatest liability, it is your fear. So don't fear because we're here for you always. But from us, the A-squared team, we just want to say peace.